Don't expect anything too exciting to come out of these so-called talks between the United States and Iran. Uh, there was, I guess, fear or optimism, depending on how you look at it, uh, from both sides regarding uh, Biden's inauguration with respect uh, to the Iran deal. Uh, of course, since uh, the Iran deal was something that was um, a achievement of Barack Obama, uh, the Republicans and Donald Trump uh, were very quick to get rid of it. Uh, and to pull out and to say, no, we don't like Iran, no deal with them, they're terrorists, America doesn't negotiate with terrorists, or some such nonsense. Uh, but considering how much Democrats uh, sort of instinctively hate Trump and anything he does, uh, perhaps this uh, would have been an opportunity for them to reverse it. After all, they love Obama, he was their demigod, uh, and they hate Trump. Uh, so wouldn't it just make sense to go back to the deal that the great Barack Obama had gifted to them, uh, you know, on, on his stone tablets? The answer to that is almost certainly no. Uh, frankly, uh, Iran seems pretty, um, they, they seem like they don't just want to just go back to the deal in name only and not get anything for it. Um, Iran's only leverage uh, in order to get these sanctions, which hamper their economy, um, taken off by the United States, is to uh, increase uh, their levels of uranium enrichment and to uh, sort of stockpile that enriched uranium. Now, to be clear, uh, the levels of uh, uranium or the levels of enrichment uh, that they're engaging in here is not sufficient to make a nuclear bomb. They're nowhere near. Uh, as of yet, they haven't gotten close. Uh, to enriching uh, uranium uh, to the uh, to the extent that it would be useful uh, in a nuclear weapon, but they are nonetheless um, no longer in compliance uh, with uh, the deal that they had negotiated with Barack Obama in order to get uh, the old sanctions lifted and to try and start working towards a, a path towards uh, you know normalization. Of relations and to you know for the U.S. and Iran to treat each other as uh, you know normal partners in the world, but since Trump put those sanctions back on in 2018 or so, um, they want them taken off. So they're going to continue doing what they're doing, and until uh, you know the U.S. says nope, we're, okay, we'll give in, we'll let you you know you're you're exerting your leverage. And we're going to respond to that by giving you what you want, and then you're going to give us what we want. Um, nothing is going to change. But of course, the Biden folks can't. They can't do that. They can't let Iran do that because then that would make the the United States look weak. Because the U.S. is responding to what Iran wants, rather than Iran just doing what we say. Uh, but of course, they have no incentive to do what we say. Because before, uh, when they were when they were doing uh, what Obama told them to do. Uh, uh, Trump came back and put sanctions on them anyway. Uh, and the only way that they were able uh, to get the United States uh, anywhere near to a ne negotiating table, even though they're not directly uh, talking to each other, which is just, I mean, it's so ridiculous and childish. Apparently, the U.S. and Iran sent diplomats to Vienna, um, and they're both in the same city, I guess, staying at the same hotel. But they're not speaking to each other. They're speaking to some other, um, you know, some other folks. Uh, and then they're going to go back and tell the other person, uh, you know, what they said. They're like in different rooms. It's, it's absurd. And so I don't expect anything to come out of this anytime soon. Uh, the U.S. is going to have to move in a much more accommodative direction, I think, before uh, Iran is going to respond positively. Because like I said, they have no incentive. Um, you know, Iran's not in a great spot economically. Um, you know, the sanctions are not nice. It's not nice to be sanctioned. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, if the U.S. was sanctioned, um, we would turn into uh, a Mad Max society very quickly since, uh, you know, all of our goods pretty much are imported. We produce very little in this country. We run massive trade deficits every year. Uh, if we, uh, you know, if international trade between the United States and the rest of the world was uh, hindered, uh, to any extent, really, um, you know, there would be massive shortages in everything. And so 
um, even if uh, Iran is able to produce more things domestically themselves, which I don't know if they are, I'm not sure what sort of their domestic industries are, but I'd imagine that they've adapted to some extent to being isolated. Um, you know, countries tend to do that over time. Uh, it's still not nice. They would be doing much better if they had uh, greater access to uh, world markets. You know, that's of uh, much greater interest to them uh, it, uh, than, you know, having uh, slightly higher induced or uh, enriched uranium uh, than the deal would allow. Because again, they can't build a bomb or anything ridiculous with the few with the uranium they're enriching right now. Um, all that it's good for is to try and uh, lure the Americans back to the negotiating table so that they can get those sanctions taken off and then they'll go back to living their lives. I mean, the whole Iran deal was superfluous anyway, because Iran was a party to the uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. So they already have IAEA inspectors there uh, who are watching their nuclear program and making sure that they're not building a bomb. Because here's the thing. If the, in if the reactors are, are running, uh, they can run forever, you know, but if they're not in enriching uranium um, uh, enough to build a bomb like is because there's different grades of enriched uranium you have low enrichment high enrichment and you have to have very very high enriched uranium uh to you know that's why it's called weapons grade uranium that's you know it's kind of it's just because not all uranium not all nuclear reactors um are useful to, for making a bomb and you know people you know are naturally suspicious will go well why do the Iranians want uh, nuclear power anyway? Even though these are the same people who here in the United States would say, hey, we need more nuclear power here. You know, it's so efficient and cheap and, and all this. You know, they, these people could rattle off to you all the benefits of using nuclear power in the United States. But if Iran wants to do it, they go, well, why would Iran want to do that? Iran has all this oil that they can use. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, it's old uh, David Ricardo. It's comparative advantage. Uh, yes, uh, Iran could uh, just get all their energy by burning oil, uh, but it's it's better for them. It's more efficient for them to produce electricity using nuclear power and to export their oil to the rest of the world, other countries that don't have so much oil. They're better off exporting oil and importing uranium um, to generate electricity rather than just burning fossil fuels. It's cheaper for them that way, and then they can generate more power. Uh, the cost of, uh, of power then in the country can be, cheap, you know, can be cheaper because you're producing more of it, and the standard of living uh, for their population will rise. So it's a, it's a pretty basic reason why they would want nuclear power. And so it's a worthy cause to try and make sure that other countries aren't trying to build nuclear bombs. Um, you know, it's scary enough the number of countries that have nuclear bombs. Uh, but <laughs> until they kick out the IAEA inspectors and things and totally block out the rest of the world and say to the rest of the world, ha, you know, we're not going to let you inspect our nuclear stuff, um, then you don't have anything to worry about. And here's the thing. Um, let's say, oh, well, what if they have secret underground reactors that we don't know about? Uh, which I guess you could say that about any country in the world. You could say any country in the world has some secret underground nuclear program that we don't know about, um, except... We would find out about it eventually because of, uh, of seismic readings. Um, it, you know, it's very hard to test a nuclear bomb uh, without anybody in the rest of the world finding out about it. And so if Iran really tried to do that, I don't think they'd be able to keep it a secret. And once the secret got out that, oh my gosh, Iran has some secret uh, nuclear program that they're hiding deep underground in some mountain, uh, they, you know, they might very well be invaded. And by that point, you know, when you get to the stage where you're just testing your first nuclear bomb, you don't, you're not ready to deploy them in war. It's not like, oh, okay, we tested a nuclear bomb. Now let's send them, now let's send missiles uh, to LA. Let's nuke LA, New York City, uh, um, Dallas, Atlanta, Paris, uh, Moscow, uh, London, uh, Rome. Let's just nuke all these cities now that we've tested one nuclear bomb. No, normally, <laughs> I mean, if they just tested their first bomb, they don't have any other ones. And who knows if, you know, if the rest of them work or whatever. You know, it's, it, it takes a long time. Um, you have a lot of notice when it comes to this sort of thing. But why would Iran do that? Because they know that if they try and build a nuke, they're going to get invaded uh, by a bunch of other countries uh, who uh, will eventually defeat them. So this whole Iran nuclear controversy is, is really just stupid. Um, and it, 
it's annoying that we keep having to talk about it, uh, but I guess the more this issue goes on, the longer this goes on, maybe pre more and more people will start to wake up to it. Because, you know, I, this is something that even before I really understood the issue, I always kind of scratched my head at it when you would hear, uh, like, conservatives on talk radio, uh, which I used to listen to a lot of talk radio. Uh, they would get so upset about Iran and their nukes and all that. And, eh, I really... It really never, I never bought into it 100%. Then once I started to look into it a little bit more, and I looked at what the actual incentives were and what the facts behind the whole situation were, and it became pretty obvious that there's not a huge danger that Iran is just going to build some secret nuclear bomb and then nuke the rest of the world. Because despite what we've been told about the Iranian leadership, that, oh, these aren't like the leaders of the Soviet Union, you can't trust them, because they're the leaders of the Soviet Union, they were atheists, which means we can trust them because they want to survive. But these guys, they believe in God, and so they're not afraid to die. Um, I don't buy that so much. Uh, I, I think uh, that in Iran, they have politicians just like we have politicians here. And those politicians uh, love to bluster. They love to talk about how bad these other countries are, and they're so mean, and how they're going to gang up on Iran, and how, oh, we Iran, we're going to overpower them. But at the end of the day, politicians, they're not good people, they're not pious, um, and they want power. They w And those are uh, mortal concerns. So these guys, I think they want to live. I don't think that they're on a suicide mission. I don't think that you have a, uh, a country of however many millions of people um, an ancient culture um, that is just entirely suicidal. It doesn't make sense to me. The facts that we know just do not add up to that. So I expect this issue to go nowhere for a while. There might be further developments in the future. The Biden folks might, you know, try and start doing stuff behind the scenes in secret slowly, um, you know, just like what happened under Obama. Um, but as of right now, don't expect anything to come from these talks. So I think that about sums up the state of the Iran issue for now.